I set out to build the ultimate high-end gaming machine, but I ran into some serious issues along the way. Was I successful or did it turn into a nightmare build? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In this video, my focus will be on building a high-end ASUS ROG-themed Intel-based gaming PC. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. Didn't I just make videos on how ASUS is scamming people and how Intel is taking performance away from customers? Customers? I did, but I thought to myself, what better way to follow up my ASUS scam and Intel sucks videos than to build an all ASUS and Intel ultimate gaming machine. All right, the truth is I started working on this months ago and I ran into so many issues that I kept pushing it to the right. The bad news is these issues were really tough to solve, resulting in a delayed video. The good news is working through these issues resulted in a lot of great content, so much so that I decided to break it into two parts. This first video will focus on the build itself and the issues that I face while putting the PC together. The second video will focus on benchmarking the PC and the issues that I face while conducting the testing. I considered making just one video showing the build and benchmarks together, but in order to keep the video length reasonable, I would have been forced to gloss over the many issues that I faced. If I am really going to serve this community, then I need to share with you the challenges, not just make it look easy. So yes, the timing may not be ideal, but I really do love the way the build turned out and walking you through the issues will hopefully help you avoid them in your next Build. So after what became weeks of building, testing, and replacing literally every component in the system, did I finally succeed? Stay tuned and find out. As mentioned earlier, the system being built today is an ASUS ROG themed ultimate gaming PC with the following core components. For the case, I selected the ASUS ROG Hyperion GR701. For the CPU, I went with the Intel Core i9-14900KS. For the motherboard, I selected the ASUS ROG Maxima Z790 Apex Encore. For the RAM, I selected Team T4 Extreme 48GB DDR5-8200 at CL38. For the GPU, I selected the ASUS ROG Matrix Platinum GeForce RTX 4090. For the CPU cooler, I selected the ASUS ROG Ryzen 3 360mm AIO. For storage, I selected Samsung 990 Pro NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSDs and 870 QVO SATA 3 SSDs. For the PSU, I selected an ASUS ROG Thor 1600T Gaming 1600W Titanium Power Supply. For cables, I selected a Cable Mod RT Series Pro Mod Mesh Sleeved 12 Volt High Power Stealth Sense Dual Cable Kit. For the GPU bracket, I went with an ASUS ROG Herculx Graphics Card Anti Sag Holder. And for fans, I went with four Unifan TL LCD 120s and five Unifan SL Infinity 120s. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. I selected these components in an attempt to generate superior gaming performance while staying true to the ROG theme. For the ROG components, I selected the best available, with the centerpiece definitely being the Matrix Platinum RTX 4090, a $3,000 plus GPU that I benchmarked in an earlier video. For the motherboard, I selected the Apex Encore, which is arguably the best two dim Z790 motherboard on the market today and a great platform for overclocking. For the memory, I chose the T-Force Extreme 8200 CL38 kit over the G-Skill Trident Z5 8400 CL40 kit because of the tighter timings and more appealing heatsink design. I gave up RGB, but I think the Extreme heatsinks look better and will be more effective at cooling the RAM modules. For storage, I went with Gen 4 SSDs primarily because the motherboard only has one slot that supports Gen 5 SSDs and unfortunately it shares bandwidth with the GPU slots. So if you populate the M.2-1 slot, your GPU will run in X8 mode only, which is definitely not a trade-off I was willing to make. This is something you need to be aware of when building a PC and selecting components. The increased speed of Gen 5 SSDs will not compensate for a reduction in GPU bandwidth, so make sure you choose wisely. One thing I also want to point out is that this is not a sponsored build, so the pain of purchasing these high-end components was very, very real. With all of the components in hand, let's get building.
I'm actually really happy with how this build came together, but as I alluded to earlier, it certainly wasn't easy. During this build, I seemed to run into issue after issue, which significantly increased the build time. So I put together a table to summarize the issues I came across during this build, and importantly, how I was able to solve them. I don't plan to cover all of them in detail during this video. However, I think it will be helpful to discuss a few of the larger issues that you should try to avoid during your next build. The first major issue I came across during the build was the length of the AIO radiator screws. Now it may sound strange, especially for one of the most expensive AIOs on the market, but the screws supplied by ASUS with the Ryzen 3 are simply too long. And if you use them per the provided instructions, they will damage the radiator fins. It's truly shocking to me that ASUS would make such a simple mistake, but perhaps I shouldn't be surprised given the recent drama surrounding them. My advice for anyone using radiators is to check the length of the screws that you plan to use before installing them. If they look like they're too long, then use washers to generate the necessary clearance. This is super important because if you damage the fins, the radiator could leak, which is definitely not something you want to happen. Corsair does a good job of adding a small metal tab under the screw holes with their rads to prevent this damage from occurring, something ASUS should consider doing. Or perhaps they could spend a few extra minutes checking the length of the screws they provide. Add this to the list of stupid things that ASUS has done lately. The second major issue I came across during this build was with the Lian Li fans. I decided to use a combination of TL LCD and SL Infinity fans, thinking that since the cables were identical that I could get away with using only one fan hub. It turns out that even though you can connect the fans, the Alconnect software will not recognize them unless they are connected to their own hubs. So TL LCD fans require a TL LCD hub and SL Infinity fans require an SL Infinity hub. If I had known this prior to building, I would have gone with different fans. In addition, for some unknown reason, if you connect your TL LCD fans to port one on the hub, they will not function correctly correctly. You need to use only ports 2, 3 or 4. This makes absolutely no sense. Why even offer a port that people can't use? Most people will connect their fans starting with port 1, so it's an extremely bad design, especially for fans that are this expensive. Lian Li really needs to fix this issue rapidly. The last major issue I faced during the build was with the USB headers on the motherboard. This is an issue that seems to arise with every single build I do. There are simply not enough USB 2 headers on motherboards to support all of the devices that need them. In addition, for this build, the front I.O. panel has two USB Type-C connectors, while the motherboard only has one header. So in order to make it work, I had to get creative. For the USB 2.0 headers, this is a common issue that can be solved by using an internal USB hub expander. The problem is that if you use an unpowered option, such as the cheap ones that you find on Amazon, then you will likely run into problems when you use them with components that have LCD screens, such as AIOs. To solve this issue, I used a powered NZXT internal USB hub expander. There are other options available from companies like Corsair, but whatever you choose, make sure the hub is powered. I've experienced system stutters and other issues from using non-powered hubs before, so I strongly encourage you to avoid them. For the USB Type-C connectors, I decided to convert one of the two USB 3.0 motherboard headers into a Type-C connector by using a straight-angled USB 3.0 internal header to USB 3.1, 3.2 Type-C key A adapter. The disadvantage of doing this is that one of the front Type-C ports will only run at 25% of the rated speed, but I couldn't find an internal Type-C splitter. I then split the remaining USB 3.0 header to support the front USB 3.0 ports. Hopefully this will help you avoid these issues when you're building your next PC. In today's video, we saw just how challenging it can be to build your dream system. I was able to create a truly beautiful gaming PC, but it certainly wasn't easy. Anyone can build a PC, but not anyone can build an ultimate gaming PC. It's not just hardware, it's software. It's making all the components work together synergistically to generate amazing performance. That's why testing is so important. It's easy to claim that a PC offers amazing performance, but you really need to prove it. So that is exactly what I'll be doing in part two of this video. I tested this system extensively in applications and 17 games at three different resolutions and three different game settings. And I can't wait to share with you the issues that that I ran into while conducting this testing, because I think that many of you will be able to get a significant performance boost by adopting the solutions that I discovered. In Total War Warhammer 3, for example, I was able to boost my 1% lows by over 300%, which was truly mind blowing. This is why it's so important to test your system after building it, and why most tech YouTubers don't bother testing. It's much easier and less time consuming to claim it's a great gaming PC than to prove it, as you will clearly see in part two. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Golden Sample Builds Expert Build Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes. And if you would like to support the channel further, please also consider joining our new membership program. Bye for now.